AMD's next generation of GPUs are nearly here, utilizing the RDNA 4 architecture. And while you've probably seen our previous video about what AMD needs to do to compete with Nvidia, today we're focusing specifically on what RDNA 4 brings to the table, technically. We'll be looking at everything from architectural improvements to performance numbers, software features, and even making some, let's call them educated price predictions. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Oi oi, I hear you're in the market for a proper top of the line monitor. Best blacks, brightest whites, sharper than a tailor's crease. Am I right? Yeah, that's the one. Well, look no further, my son. Feast your peepers on this, the Glaremaster 5000, a true marvel of technology. Just uh, maybe don't use it when the sun's out. What? That's not what I want. I was after a 32 inch 4K, 165 Hertz QD OLED with adaptive sync. Cool, blimey, we've got a right tech connoisseur here. You don't mess about, do you? All right, all right. I see where you're coming from. Forget the glare master, that was just a warm up. What you need, my friend, is the Agon Pro, AG326UD from AOC. Top tier gear, 4K, 165 Hertz, QD OLED, all the bells and whistles. And get this, HDR400 certified. That's the real deal, no mucking about. Hmm, that does sound good. Of course it does. I wouldn't steer you wrong, would I? I'm all about quality, me. Now, if you want to get your hands on one of these beauties, you know what to do. To find out more, click the link in the description below. You won't regret it, my son. Lovely jubbly. So, just the other day, we were invited onto a briefing session with AMD to go through all of the information that we can, well, let you know about today. And getting straight into it and looking at AMD slides. And, well, we can see a clear progression from RDNA 2 through RDNA 3 and now to RDNA 4. Each generation has brought significant improvements, but RDNA 4 represents perhaps the most substantial architectural overhaul since the original RDNA lineup. The most fundamental change appears to be in how the architecture handles resource allocation. RDNA 3 used a static register allocation system where registers would be reserved for specific workloads, even when idle. RDNA 4, however, introduces dynamic register allocation, which means that those previously idle registers can now be repurposed on the fly. This allows for much more efficient utilization of the silicon and helps explain some of the performance gains that we're actually going to be seeing. Another major advancement is in the ray tracing hardware side of things. AMD has a sophisticated new implementation of orientated bounding box optimization, or OBB for short. For those unfamiliar, this technique dramatically reduces the number of ray intersection tests needed when ray tracing complex scenes. The traversal heat maps in the slide show significantly fewer ray tests being performed for the same scene, which of course translates to much better ray tracing performance. The compute architecture itself has also seen substantial improvements. The biggest gains appear to be in specialized compute operations, with half precision operations seeing a two times improvement over RDNA 3, while INT8, FP8, and the newly supported BF8 operations show an impressive four times improvement. This is particularly significant for AI workloads, which often rely heavily on those lower precision operations. Now digging deeper into the compute enhancements, we can see that AMD has maintained the same F32 or standard floating point performance at 256 operations per compute unit, and the same F64 or double precision at four operations per CU. However, for the AI relevant operations, the improvements are substantial. The FP16 and BF16 operations have increased from 512 to 1024 or 2048 operations per CU, depending on the workload. Beyond that, the most impressive is going to be the new support for FP8 and BF8 formats, which can achieve 2048 to 4096 operations per CU. Then the INT8 operations have also dramatically improved from 512 to between 2048 and 4096 operations per CU, while INT4 has jumped from 1024 to between 4096 and 8192 operations per CU. So yeah. A lot of big numbers. Now, the memory subsystem in RDNA 4 also shows some interesting choices from AMD. Both the 9070 and the RX 9070 XT come equipped with 16 gig of VRAM, which is well, quite generous for cards in this performance tier and matches what Nvidia is offering with the RTX 5070 Ti. This should provide ample headroom for current and upcoming titles, even at 4K resolution with high resolution textures. Now, according to AMD, the new architecture implements dual ray intersection capabilities, which essentially allows the GPU to process two ray intersections simultaneously. Combined with the orientated bounding box optimizations that we mentioned earlier, this results in far fewer ray traversal steps for the exact same scene. 
But what's really fascinating is the new out-of-order memory architecture that AMD has implemented with RDNA 4. In previous generations, memory requests had to be processed in the order that they were made, which could create bottlenecks when some requests took much longer than others. RDNA 4, however, introduces additional out-of-order queues for memory requests, which means data that's ready can be returned immediately without waiting for older, high-latency requests to complete first. This is especially crucial for ray tracing workloads, which the slides specifically call out as being highly sensitive to memory latency. When you're tracing rays for a BVH structure and accessing textures and buffers for shading, you can have wildly different memory access patterns. With RDNA 4, shaders can now execute efficiently regardless of some long latency requests, as the architecture allows requests from different shaders to be satisfied completely out of order. In practical terms, this means operations like surface shading won't be held up by something like an uncached leaf node access, resulting in better overall performance across many workloads. It's a smart approach to addressing one of the key bottlenecks in modern GPU performance, and well, something I'm actually really excited to see in practice. Now, AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution technology reaches its fourth generation with RDNA 4, and the improvements are substantial, according to AMD. The benchmark slides show impressive performance uplifts across various titles. In Call of Duty Black Ops 6, we see performance jump from 72 FPS native to 128 with FSR 4 upscaling, and then all the way up to 206 FPS when frame generation is added to the mix. Ratchet and Clank with ray tracing shows similar improvements, going from just 39 FPS at native 4K to 78 FPS with upscaling, and then 144 FPS with both upscaling and frame generation enabled. Then Marvel Spider-Man with ray tracing enabled makes a huge leap from 86 FPS native to 133 with upscaling, and then an impressive 224 FPS when frame generation is also enabled. These numbers represent significant improvements over FSR3, with upscaling alone providing roughly a 1.5 to 2 times performance boost, and then frame generation pushing that to 2.5 to 3.5 times in many cases. The slides also suggest FSR4 will have better image quality than previous generations, particularly in motion, which has been a point of criticism compared to Nvidia's DLSS technology. Now, as we noted in our previous video, one caveat worth noting is that AMD's forward-looking statement disclaimer in the FSR4 deck mentions AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT specifically, which, I don't know, suggests FSR4 might be exclusive to RDNA 4 hardware, at least initially. This could potentially limit adoption compared to Nvidia's approach of supporting older hardware with newer DLSS versions. It also creates that chicken and egg problem that we discussed, where developers might be hesitant to spend resources implementing FSR4 for, well, what would I guess be classed as a limited hardware base. Now, AMD's software ecosystem is also receiving substantial updates alongside RDNA 4, with improvements that extend beyond just gaming performance. One area seeing significant enhancement is the media engine. As shown in the slides, RDNA 4 features an upgraded encoding and decoding pipeline that supports H.264, HVEC, and AV1 codecs. Content creators will be pleased to see support for up to 8K resolution at 80 FPS for both encoding and decoding, which is perfect for high resolution video production. The slides also highlight that, well, there's no limit on the number of sessions or encode streams, making this ideal for streamers who need to manage multiple video feeds simultaneously. There's a visible quality improvement in the media engine as well. The side-by-side -side comparison of 1080p H.264 encoding at 6 megabits per second shows noticeably clearer details and better color reproduction in RDNA 4 compared to RDNA 3. Plus, AMD has added accelerated post-processing effects, giving content creators more tools to enhance their videos directly through the GPU, which, well, is great for anyone who's in that space. Now, as we mentioned in our previous video, AMD has finally fixed that weird RDNA 3 quirk, where AV1 1080p encoding was actually outputting at 1082p. However, it is worth noting that RDNA 4 won't support two-pass encoding at any resolution, which, well, in my opinion, is a bit of a step backward for content creators who need that kind of encoding flexibility. The Adrenaline software suite now includes AI-powered features. Of course it does, because AI is everything. And this includes what appears to be an AI assistant integrated directly into the driver interface. While the slides are somewhat redacted, they suggest this assistant can help with game setting optimization, troubleshooting, and possibly even gameplay tips. 
Now, AMD Image Inspector also seems to be the new tool for analyzing and enhancing games, with users reporting issues to AMD which are detected automatically, like graphical corruption. And this could be a bit of a game changer. Now, from AMD slides, we can glean some information about the upcoming product stack, though many details, as I mentioned, do remain redacted. The RX 9070 XT appears to be positioned as the direct competitor to the upper mid-range of NVIDIA's lineup. Now, benchmark slides show it achieving 38% better performance than the 7900GRE at 1440p and 42% better at 4K. Now, using these comparisons, we can estimate that the 9070 XT will be somewhat behind the 7900 XTX in rasterized games, though interestingly, potentially faster in ray trace titles, given the architectural improvements that we spoke about. The slides don't provide clear information about other SKUs, but based on AMD's usual product stack approach, we can expect SKUs down the stack to follow in the future. So the big one, pricing. AMD has, but also hasn't, announced official pricing. While the embargo for this content, as well as pricing, was meant to go live at 2 p.m. UK time today, it seems China jumped the gun a little and, well, has announced pricing already at 4,499 RMB for the RX 9070 and 4,999 RMB for the RX 9070 XT, which by today's exchange rates and removal of tax means that the cards come in at $549 and $599 US respectively. Now, I'll be honest, we had already made this content and was essentially ready to publish at 2 p.m. with some speculations, which went a little something like this. Now, while AMD hasn't officially announced pricing yet, we can make some somewhat educated predictions based on the performance data, historical trends, and of course, market in positioning. Now, looking at the benchmark data and comparing to both RDNA 3 and NVIDIA's RTX 50 series, the RX 9070 XT appears to be positioned somewhere between the 5070 and 5070 Ti in terms of raw performance. Historically, AMD has priced their cards about 15 to 20% below NVIDIA's comparable offerings to, of course, try and gain market share. It's, well, been their strategy for several generations now, and there's little reason to think that they'd change course dramatically. So what does that actually mean though, in terms of real numbers? Well, with the RTX 5070 Ti sitting at $749 and the 5070 at $549 MSRP, a logical price point for the 9070 XT would be around $599 to $649. This would position it as better value than the 5070 Ti while commanding a premium over the RTX 5070. It's, well, a sweet spot that would make a lot of sense for AMD. Now, for the presumed non-XT 9070, a price point of 499 to 549 would make sense, directly competing with the RTX 5070. And this would be their bang-for-buck offering that traditionally sells in higher volumes. However, there's a wild card here. Given that AMD's declining market share, which JPR data shows has dropped to just 10% of the discrete GPU market, they might need to be even more aggressive with pricing. A 25 to 30% discount compared to Nvidia's offerings could potentially help them regain some market share, which would put the 9070 XT closer to $549. I mean, that would be an incredibly aggressive move, but it might be necessary in today's competitive landscape. Whether they would do that is, well, unlikely at best if we're being kind given the current GPU market, but time will tell. So at least we weren't far off from kind of what we predicted, give or take $50. But I do wonder with this pricing that was presented at a special event in China, are AMD falling into the same trap as they did with the 7700 XT and 7800 XT, where pricing was kind of so close that even though AMD had set MSRPs at 449 and 499 respectively, retailers started listing the 7700 XT closer to the 420 to $430 range, with some cases even going as low as 399 due to market competition from, well, their other cards in the stack and from Nvidia, and could even make the RX 9070 non-XT kind of dead in the water from the start, while the 9070 XT could be maybe onto a real winner here. While not explicitly stated in the slides, there have been reports of RDNA 4 cards appearing in retail channels in January before being pulled back for a March launch. This suggests that manufacturing is already well underway and AMD should have at least a reasonable supply available at launch. Something that maybe Nvidia have, well, struggled with on the RTX 50 series. So what does this all mean for AMD and more importantly, for you guys, the gamers. Well, RDNA 4 represents a significant architectural leap forward with substantial improvements in compute performance, ray tracing capabilities, and AI acceleration. 
The FSR4 technology shows impressive gains in the benchmarks that we've seen, and the overall package seems quite competitive. While AMD is unlikely to dethrone Nvidia at the absolute high end of the market, the 9070 XT appears to be a very compelling option in the upper mid-range segment, if AMD prices it aggressively, as we discussed earlier. We're talking about a card that can deliver solid 4K gaming performance and exceptional 1440p performance across a wide range of titles. If they don't, however, and based on everything we've seen, this appears the most likely, it's unlikely to make a massive dent in AMD's market share for discrete GPUs. Now, the software ecosystem continues to be an area where AMD lags behind Nvidia, particularly in terms of AI features and developer support. As we noted in our previous analysis, this is a critical weakness that needs addressing. However, the improvements to Adrenaline and the addition of features like AMD Image Inspector shows that they are making progress. It's not a transformation overnight, but it's definitely moving in the right direction. And even though it is a free feature because it's part of software, it does add a certain extra added value to buying one of these cards. So definitely keep that in mind. Now for gamers, content creators, and even casual AI enthusiasts, RDNA 4 looks to offer excellent value based on what we've said, particularly if our price predictions do prove accurate. Whether this will be enough to reverse AMD's decline in market share remains to be seen, but technically speaking, RDNA 4 appears to be their strongest architecture yet, and well, that's something worth getting excited about. As for the retail availability issue that we discussed last time with cards appearing in January before being pulled back, well, at least it suggests that AMD should have decent stock available for the official launch. That's one area, as I mentioned, where they could potentially gain an advantage over Nvidia if stock constraints continue to be an issue for the RTX 50 series. Because, well, the problem is when you don't have stock, prices go up and then everyone just complains regardless. So yeah, what do you think about RDNA 4 based on what you've seen so far? Are you excited about the performance improvements? Do you think our price predictions make sense? Or will AMD go more aggressive to regain market share? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this deep dive, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do and want more eTechnics content, I mean, why wouldn't you? Then check out our Patreon where you get early access to testing data, behind the scenes content, and exclusive meetups at the eTechnics offices. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.